Hello and welcome to this presentation where we will talk about hybrid Oracle Data Guard without having an on-premise TDE license. It also includes a short step-by-step -step live demo. Hello, my name is Peter Wall. I'm the Principal Product Manager for Encryption Key and Secrets Management in the Oracle Database Security Team. We have many customers who like to protect an on-premise database with a standby database in their OCI tenancy. Now, if both databases are encrypted, like in this case, this is fully supported for all database versions starting from 11.204 all the way to 21c. If you do a road switch, no problem. It's the same as if you do a road switch with an on-premise data guard. Everything is supported and the only thing that you have to worry about is making sure that the standby database has a copy of the wallet from the primary. Now, if your on-premise database is not encrypted because you don't have a TDE license and you still would like to set up a standby database in OCI, in this case, your primary database would send not encrypted data over an encrypted channel over to your standby database, which means that you have to intervene manually all the time and encrypt the data that was sent from the primary to the standby to adhere to Oracle's encryption mandate in OCI. Now, if you do a road switch, the encrypted primary database will send encrypted data to your standby database where you need to uh, manually intervene and decrypt the incoming data for which you already need a TDE license. This problem has been addressed with Oracle Database 1916. In this case, if you have a not encrypted primary database, your clear text data will be sent over an encrypted channel to your standby database where it will be encrypted before it's written to the standby database. The primary database, even though it's not encrypted, needs a complete and fully functional TDE setup, but not a TDE license. Now, if you do a role switch, the primary database will send encrypted data to the standby database. It will be decrypted before it's written to the standby database. And we do this by introducing a new static initialization parameter, tablespace encryption, that is set to decrypt only on your standby database. Demo time. I will show you how to set the static TDE parameters on the primary and standby database, which you can do in a rolling fashion if your databases are RAC enabled. Then we will set the dynamic TDE parameters in the primary and standby. We will create an outer open wallet and set the first master key on the primary database. We copy the wallet to the standby. Then we create a table space on the primary database and confirm that this table space will be encrypted on the standby. And then we will encrypt the remaining table spaces on the standby database without causing primary database downtime. And afterwards, you will automatically comply with OCI's encryption mandate. So here in this left tab, we see the on-premise um, primary database. On the right tab, we see the standby database in OCI. So the first thing that I will do is I will create the directories that we need for the database to find all the TDE relevant information. So we create a few directories. From these directories, this will become wallet root in a later moment. And then we have those subdirectories, OKV, TDE, TDE underscore SEPS, and TLS. Today, we only need this one. We only need the TDE directory. The other directories are for a future demo. And now we execute the same command on our standby database in OCI. So now that we have the directories, we set wallet root, which tells the database where those directories are. This is a static initialization parameter, which means afterwards we need to restart the database. So now we set the new parameter to decrypt only on our primary database because we don't have a TDE license. And we want encrypted table spaces to be encrypted with AES-256. If you don't set this parameter, the default encryption algorithm will be AES-128. 
and this parameter needs to be set before you create your first key. So now let's connect to our standby database. And you notice that if I log into my standby database, the prompt is yellow. If I'm on my primary on-prem, the prompt is green. So we set the same parameters for the standby database, except that the table space encryption parameter here on the primary is set to decrypt only on the standby database, it's set to auto enable. And also here we set the table space encryption default algorithm to AS256. Now we exit and we shut down the primary database. Okay, now we log into our standby database in OCI and restart the standby database. and we start the primary database. Okay, now that both primary and standby database have restarted, we set the next parameter that tells the database which key store to use. So in this case, it will be a file, which means we use a wallet instead of OKV. And we will connect to our standby database and do the same setting there. Okay, and now we exit and go to our primary database and we will create a password protected wallet. And we create an auto open wallet. That's what you would like to have in DataGuard so that your standby database can switch over to become the new primary. And here we set the first master encryption key for the container database and all open PDBs. Okay, so now we need to copy this wallet over to the standby database. And we can log into our pluggable database and create a table space. That's one of the points of my demo. So I'm creating a table space. I create a table in this table space and then I select from the table. All good. And now let's log into the root container and execute a select statement that looks for encrypted table spaces and there is nothing. But of course if we connect to our standby database and we execute the same command again, we will see that the protected 01 table space is encrypted with AS256 on the standby database. So now while we are connected to the standby database, I will stop the MRP just for a moment and we will encrypt the remaining table spaces. In the container database, I plan to only encrypt the user table space because we don't expect any sensitive application data from the PDBs to spill into the default table spaces of the container database. So we don't need to encrypt system sysaux temp and undo. Now, if I connect to the PDB on the standby side, it doesn't have a listener, so I need to use the alter session set container statement. And here I'm also encrypting the table spaces of my standby PDB. So here in this case, I encrypt the system table space I 
encrypt the sysaux table space. And the users table space. Okay, so now we're going back to our standby root container and we restart the MRP. So while I was encrypting, there was no downtime on the primary database. And as soon as the MRP has been restarted, we can query our database again for encrypted table spaces and we can see that we have the user table space in the root container is encrypted we encrypted user system and sysaux in our pdb and this table space came over from the primary database of course if i do the same thing on on my standby database Same query. Nothing is selected. So now let's do a role switch. For this, we go to our standby database, log in with DataGuard Broker, and switch over to the standby database. Okay, one of the most important things to look out for is that you would like the new primary to be able to give access to encrypted data right after restart. So let's validate. And indeed, we have an auto open wallet. The database knows how to get the master key out of this wallet. And now let's see if everything works as advertised. Let's delete our demo table space and create a new one. Protected 02. We create a table in this table space and we select from this table and now we exit and log into our primary root container and select for encrypted table spaces again and there you will see that protected 02 has been encrypted because it is set to auto enable and if we connect to our standby database on premise and do the same query there then we see that nothing is encrypted okay this concludes our demo if you have only a small set of databases where you have a hybrid deployment like an, uncrypt, an unencrypted primary database on-prem with an encrypted database in OCI, there's nothing to worry about. But if you have more than just a few, um, I told you that you need a fully functional TDE setup even on your unencrypted database. So here the question of key management comes up regardless even if those databases are not encrypted and i would like to suggest to take a closer look at oracle key vault oracle key vault can be deployed as a cluster consisting out of uh, multiple read write pairs like here in this picture number 1a and number 1b are a read write pair and number 2a and 2b are another read write pair those read-write pairs are kept in sync, so at one point all your encryption keys are available everywhere, which greatly simplifies wiki operations in DataGuard. Another very important benefit of Oracle Key Vault is that you can centralize your wallets. You don't have hundreds of wallets that need to be protected. They need to be copied around to the standby database after wiki operations. This is all transparent. Wiki operations are synchronized between OKV clusters and the keys are available to primary and standby database immediately. You don't have a wallet footprint on your database machine. There are no encryption keys because the encryption keys will be in Oracle Key Vault and they will be safe there. Right? Oracle Key Vault is a hardened appliance that can be installed on-premise on, on dedicated hardware as a virtual machine guest or you can deploy it in your OCI tenancy from the cloud marketplace and then build a cluster of key management servers. 
Okay, that was today's presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to the next one. Thank you.